This is Viterbi Voices. Coming to you from the University of Southern California, Viterbi School of Engineering. We're here to give you the inside scoop about research, classes, student life, and so much more. All of these shared from our students, faculty, and other members of our USC community. Well, hello, everybody, again, and welcome back to the Turby Voices, the podcast. I am one of your co-hosts. My name is Paul Ledesma, Executive Director of Undergraduate Admission here at the USC Viterbi School of Engineering. And hi, everyone. My name is Emily Powis, and I'm a senior studying biomedical engineering. And joining us is uh, no rookie to the podcast, but I don't think we've seen her for a, a little bit. Uh, Alex, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Alex Rennie, and I'm a senior majoring in industrial and systems engineering. Awesome, Alex. And before we get into uh, the episode you're bringing us here today, uh, how is your senior year wrapping up? What's what, what's happening these days? You're in your last semester. I know. It's crazy. I just started my grad classes. I'm also doing PDP here at USC, getting my cool. master's in engineering management. Um, so that's been really exciting, really enjoying that so far. But I feel like part of me is in disbelief also because I do have <laughs> another year here at USC. I don't think it's fully hit me yet. Yeah, um, but it's crazy that we only have what like thirteen weeks left, twelve weeks left. Yeah, it's a it's kind of this this weird fade out because you're not really going anywhere, but you're yeah. <laughs> graduating and you're staying to to do your master's degree in just one more year, right? Yeah, but a lot of my friends, it's starting to hit them, so I'm starting to see it, starting to feel it. Yeah, it'll. I gotta warn you, it'll be weird. You'll be around, and you'll be like, um, everyone's doing something else somewhere else, and you won't <laughs> yeah. really feel connected to the student body because, like, they're doing other things. It's this weird in between phase, but it's okay. That's good. It'll be fun. How are you liking engineering management for a master's degree? I'm really enjoying it. Um, my Can current, you explain what it, what it is. One class right now. It's. The way my professor explained it, which I don't know if this is the best way to explain it, but it's almost like a more technical MBA in a sense. It just gives people a lot of skills to be managers and be leaders in whatever organization they want to be, especially in a technical field, which is eventually where I want to end up. Sweet. Very cool. Well, let's get to why uh, you're here. And you brought us a, a whole episode uh, about a, a really cool element of someone's, usually their senior year. Yes. So today we are talking about the mechanical engineering capstone project. I interviewed my friends, uh, Nick and Tillman, who are actually my neighbors, and I go over to their apartment for dinner all the time. And so I got to see the progress of this project from week one to, you know, go to the fair and watch them share with everyone, share with the world. So I thought it would be really cool to share with our audience here, too. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, let's let, let's not uh, waste any more time. Let's get out of the way and hand it over to you to talk about this uh, senior capstone design project. So today I am here with my friends, Nick and Tillman, who are both seniors at USC like me, but they're majoring in Mechanical engineering. Uh, why don't you guys introduce yourself to kick us off? Yeah, sure. So, uh, I mean, you covered the, at least the base steps pretty well. Um, I'm Nick. I am a senior studying mechanical engineering, and my capstone project was about roller coasters and making roller coasters more, more sustainable. Uh, hello, my name is Tillman Vorsanger. I'm as well a senior mechanical engineer, and my capstone project was. Uh, building and testing a robotic fishtail robo fish we love robo fish that's awesome well you guys kind of gave it away but we're talking about um the mechanical engineering senior design project today and i'm really excited about that because i got to watch both of you kind of through this whole process so i'm excited to kind of recap about it now that you guys have done it um but i think to start for some of the listeners who maybe aren't familiar with usc or the engineering program um, can you just explain to me very generally what is the mechanical engineering senior design class? Like, just like, what is the whole goal of this class? 
Uh, sure. I mean, that seems like a pretty good place to start. So the class by class code AME441, if we're getting real technical, but uh, the name of it is Senior Projects Laboratory, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Um, basically, the entire class is, you know, getting a group of four or five people, and then you get $100 per person on your team for funding. Um, and you have to build something that has like testable data by the end of the semester and be able to write about it and kind of prove your proof of concept or talk about it very technically why it didn't work if that's the unfortunate circumstance. And it's, it's not just build a thing, right? Um, it's, not, it's not a building class, it's, it's more of a testing class. Um, so in, instead of just finding something fun to build or create, um, it, it's more set up like a PhD uh, search and discovery uh, where you're testing a certain principle and you do have to build something, uh, but it's not just building, it's building and testing and verifying your hypothesis. Yeah, I would say that's super true is building is obviously a very large component of it. Um, but I think that's where the class is kind of unique is because it is so unstructured in terms of not really having a prompt or anything to go off of you do have to exercise like all parts of scientific method and of engineering thought in order to come forward with some sort of testable experience, experiment that matters to you and then go forth to build whatever that testing apparatus, that rig is. I think that's really awesome. I think it's awesome that you get to choose what you wanna do because I think that's very different than my senior capstone. We are kind of very much given a prompt. We work with a client and they come to us with a problem. Um, so because it's so broad and because you both you know, got to choose your own topic. I know you both mentioned it a little bit, but I'd love to hear more about the topic that you both ended up choosing and how you got to that. Like, how did you decide that's what you wanted to work on for that semester? Kick it off, RoboFish. Yeah, um, well, you start through your last homework assignment of senior, uh, uh, sorry, of uh, junior level uh, mechanical engineering course called uh, Mechatronics Laboratory. Um, and, and, and yes, Mech Ops, the, infa Mech Ops. the infamous Mech Ops, a year long uh, uh, lab writing course, you do junior year. And the last uh, homework assignment is to do a proposal, right? You know, think about what you're interested in. You, you do this individually, right? And you post it to a blog, right? Um, I think my proposal was on like uh, wireless charging cars, right? Trying to, trying to introduce the, the phone wireless charging to moving cars, right? They're starting to do it out in Europe, kind of like a bus. Mm -hmm. And so then, then, then I, I put up a little blurb, I do a little research, find a couple um, uh, uh, articles on it. And then I, we got a blog post. And I look at other people, right? And I say, well, what do they do, right? And this is how we start to slowly form teams, right? And uh, one of my friends had, had thought about some sort of biomimicry uh, of sorts. Um, and so we started playing around with, okay, if we were to mimic an animal, right, what would we mimic, right? Why would we want to mimic it, right? What application would this have? Uh, and so we played around with different types of aquatic mobility and uh, landed on uh, a, a fishtail, it's called Karangaform, uh, waveform, um, to, to end up you know, with our test because it was uh, feasible, uh, in, in application, right? More, more feasible to us than some sort of squid water jet. Um, <laughs> we're playing around with that as well. So it would be fun. A squid water jet? That would have been wild. I mean, I saw your final project and I was amazed by that. So that's crazy concepts to me. Yeah, it's, yeah so we just kind of, you know, played around with a bunch of them and, and finally narrowed it down to, uh, to, to what we as a, a consensus do that blog post shows. Yeah, um, mine, I think I did my blog post on something Hyperloop related because I was like, no way would posting something about roller coasters actually garner any sort of, you know, group or any sort of support. Um, yeah, turns out three other people did them on like roller coasters, theme entertainment kind of stuff. So I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to reach out to them literally the second they were posted. So we had to have our groups made by, gosh, I want to say like mid July. And I think like early May we had a group because we're like, these are the people who all have this same super niche passion. Um, and so we we're gonna try building like a launch system originally. 
And then our professors very quickly pointed out that trying to make an electromagnetic launch or anything that could you know, pr propel a car quickly along a track would probably have enough energy to accidentally kill somebody if they touched two leads and their shoes weren't correctly grounded. So we were like, okay, maybe that's a bad idea. So instead of launching, let's look at braking. And I really don't know how we came to trying to like regenerate current back through a permanent magnet braking system, but it ended up being something that we saw was feasible to do within 15 weeks. Cause that's also kind of one of the cruxes of the class is got to do a lot of stuff in a relatively short amount of time. Wow. 15 weeks. So only one semester and I guess part of summer to complete this whole project. That's crazy. I know some of the other classes like mine, we have two whole semesters, 30 whole weeks to do our project. So that's, that must've been a huge challenge when it came to, you know, completing this. What do you think was the most challenging part of your individual projects besides this like restricted time frame? Okay. Besides the time frame, you're going to have to give me a second to think, cause that's pretty tough. Um, I would say one thing that's also really hard is when you're coming up with something blank from scratch, you don't realize how many things are going to go wrong until they start going wrong. So it's like, Oh, we have this really simple system. Mm -hmm. You show up to lab the next day, it's completely different. And you just have to keep iterating and honestly keep doing it all the way until the very end because, you know, one thing isn't working or two pieces aren't coming together, right? Or your testing apparatus isn't what you thought it was going to be. Like for mine, um, we were using kind of to test our theory of regenerative braking. Obviously we couldn't build a whole roller coaster on campus as cool as that would be. We had like two acrylic flywheels with magnets and set that were pointing at each other. And our reported thickness on the flywheel probably changed six or seven times because we couldn't find the right pieces of acrylic that fit within our $400 budget. Um, the code we had to pull that we were using to pull data switched between like three different coding languages until we've settled on one that was accurately and quickly pulling the data correctly. So just a lot of things that can go wrong will go wrong and being able to kind of quickly pivot, not freak out and say like, okay, this is fine. And we know where to go from here and we can still make that end product happen. That's awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. For, for, for my project, I think the toughest part was kind of similar to what Nick's getting at is these, this kind of constant testing, right? Mm -hmm. We had a idea of what we were building. You know, we built it and then it didn't work for like three weeks right like three weeks of like I'm, I'm talking almost all day for like four days a week you know like big like nine hour chunks sitting in the in the water channel because we had we had access to a, a massive water channel through the surveys we were testing this fish in there and and um we kept finding problems and kept solving them but it still wouldn't work right and and we're like okay we're finding problems they are problems Mm -hmm. But it's not the problem that we're looking for. It's not the underlying problem. And so just so much testing went into this until, you know, finally, finally, you know, after tests and tests and iteration and iteration, um, we, we come to a working and repeatable uh, prototype, right? I watched this poor group go crazy. I'd just be doing homework because like a lot of my friends were in that group. So they'd all be in Dr. Luhar's lab with that just amazing water channel. And I'd just be doing homework at a random table. So they're like freaking out, like, why isn't it working? Then 10 minutes later, yes, it worked. Then like 30 seconds later, it stopped working. It was, so it was, it was inconsistently working because we had a, a, a coil of wire that was getting uh, back, a back EMF, which basically means um, interference from another wire, right? Mm -hmm. And so whenever the wire was coiled up, it was interfering with itself. And whenever it was uncoiled, it wasn't interfering with itself. And so this was one of the many problems that, that caused these issues because whenever we would uncoil it, it would work. And then we coil it back up and it wouldn't work, right? And, and this was like, we didn't understand, we didn't notice that we were, we were doing this, right? And so that, that was one of the that guys drove us crazy. But this is the whole point, right? This mm -hmm. is the whole point of this, this project is uh, you get to learn the prototyping and the testing process. You know, and if you already know it, if you already have experience through it, you get to 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 refine your skills. I think that's awesome. 
I think, you know, that's kind of also part of being an engineer is you end up facing problems and you're just kind of like, oh my gosh, I don't know how to solve this. And then, you know, you have to, what is some advice you would give to, you know, incoming students who want to be engineers the first time they face a really daunting problem, probably some like you guys faced in your senior design class. What is some advice that you would want to give them or wish you had been given maybe before you started this, this project? I'm going to give two pieces of advice, one for that moment, and the one just kind of as an overall thing. First one is breathe. <laughs> You're going to be fine. It's like one thing goes wrong and then another thing can go wrong. And I mean, it's just so hard to be like, it's not working. It never works the first time. It's okay. Um, but another one is just take opportunities to ask questions where you can. And, um, you know, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty as soon as you possibly can or as soon as you want to. Because I think that's where I saw a lot of people struggle is if they were really talented and very smart theoretical engineers, but have never had that hands-on experience, whether it's tinkering on their own, joining a build team, joining a student organization. Um, and then they get to this class that it's like completely hands-on. There is no textbook. There are no given equations for you to be able to do anything. And so I think that's where a lot of people freak out, where a lot of those struggles kind of come from. So, you know, just even if it's, you know, playing with a like electronic spun kit that you could pick up or just noodling around on code or, you know, knowing how to use a screwdriver, even if something as small as that, just to have a little bit of confidence in your physical skills helps so much. Yeah, totally. Um, I, I, I would say fail forward, um, build stuff, knowing that you're gonna do it incredibly wrong. Um, I, I, uh, I was working with bearing for my force sensor and I spent like a whole day, like sizing this bearing and, and sticking a, a wooden, like a wood, uh, it was a wood, it was composite, like a composite shaft into it. And then Rod walks into the room and goes, I got a shaft for that. Right. And he just pulls out this steel shaft. He's like, it's a bearing shaft. Here it is. Right. And I had spent so much time on this, this quite simple thing um but without doing it without you know doing actually actively doing something i wouldn't have you know screwed up and then learned and then next time go right when i'm working with bearings i don't use composites because they have a different thermal expansion coefficient i have to find a proper shaft right and it like that's a that's a very technical uh conclusion but the only way you come to that and the only way you properly learn it in, in my experience is by screwing it up right and and, and you yeah. know better better screw something up that's inexpensive now uh than than screw something up in your you know the workforce or in a competition team um, that is expensive and and don't get me wrong yeah. i've screwed up expensive things before like <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, I, I, I destroyed a 7.5 kilowatt motor once. Um, oh, man. I, 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 uh, my team tested it wrong, and, and this is for a different project. But then that's the point. You know, you, you show up and you go, hey, I, you know, we read the manual wrong. We set the wrong current, and it happens, right? Yeah, I'll, I was going to say kind of as a non sequitur, but Tillman mentioned Rod. Rod is the kind of king of – um, the senior capstone lab. He's been our machinist for 12 years or so now and is like Those deserves all the accolades in the world. You know, he is basically, everyone calls him Dr. Rod kind of as a joke because he has both saved and helped so many projects along the line where, you know, mm -hmm. you have an engineering drawing in hand and you need something done really quick. You're like, hey, Rod, like, can I get this on your schedule? I need to figure out how to, you know, get this part machined. Two days later, you have your part and he would always you know, come up to us and ask, like, how's the team doing? Where are you guys stressed? Like, I want to make this as fun and as least stressful as possible, which kind of having somebody who's not a professor, but who's still very, very on your side, really in that hands-on process is also just, you know, I, I owe him so much for helping my project really take off and be successful. So got to give that shout out to Rod where, where kind of his name popped up first. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the point. Like these classes are supposed to be fun. Like Tillman said, like these classes are supposed to be a learning experience. Like they're supposed to be rewarding at the end of the day. So what do you think was the most rewarding part about this project? Like what do you, what did you get out of it? That was your favorite part. 
Nick, I know you have some great yeah about your project. Yeah, I mean, it, it was a long road there, but at the end of the semester, you have this um, kind of science fair, for lack of a better term. It's like a giant super engineer like science fair where everyone's projects are out with these posters. And the people who are walking around kind of grading your presentation posters aren't just people from USC, they bring in a lot of industry professionals. So I was doing the pitch, you know, my, my little acrylic flywheel setup, spinning it around for people to see. And I think the first one was, I want to say it's Boeing or Aerospace Corporation goes like, wow, this is really cool. When are you going to market? And we're like, what? And then JPL comes around and says, wow, this is really cool. When are you coming to market? And we are like, what? And this just happened three or four times until we realized, you know, wait a second. The reason we couldn't really find any previous research on this or the reason we don't know much about it, our project kind of seemed very bare bones, was nobody else had done this before us. So, um, I mean, as of when this podcast is being recorded, literally two days ago, uh, we started to meet with our patent lawyer and we're going to patent on it for uh, marketing, not only for amusement parks, but also for rail transportation systems and mag labs. So, you know, to be the first on something like that means, you know, we get to license it, we get to market it. And USC has a great marketing and kind of invention disclosure department. So even though, yeah, we're not getting all of the percentage of whatever's made off of it, USC does give its students a lot to make sure that they're still innovating and they're still willing to kind of trust in all of the resources USC has. So, you know, it's crazy. There are people beyond just our professors and the grade that are advocating for us. It's like, oh, you know, in a couple of years time, there could be some serious major companies like licensing something that I did for a class from us. So, you know, just kind of crazy, still not really sure how to react to all of it. Yeah, it's definitely wild. What was your favorite part about the whole thing, Tillman? So I, I well, I definitely didn't, I didn't take away a patent away or anything like that, um, though, though that is like as compelling as it gets. Um, there are a couple, there are a couple projects this year that, that uh, were spectacular like that um, uh, and are going, going into market. Um, for, for what I was, for what I was working on, it was, um, it was less uh, directly applicable uh, and, and marketable as, as what Nick was talking, talking about. Um, this this robot fishtail it has some military applications uh, it has some stealth applications um, and, and it has some uh, uh, boat boat applications right because <laughs> it's, it's for, for replacing a motor right um, but but I, there wasn't as much of a, a drive to market in, in my case for for myself what I took out of this is kind of a, a you know a full design process from beginning to end. Um, I'm, I'm getting my master's in product development engineering, uh, next year. I'm, I'm starting the PDP or I'm starting the PDP program this year, uh, and I'll stay on, on for, uh, for one year, uh, for the fifth year. Um, and so this was a, a, a fun introduction for that, uh, for me where I could say, okay, I want a, a solution, right. And there are 10 different ways to get there, right. How do you control a two degree of freedom robotic tip, right. Um, how do you how do you do that out of soft robotics, right? So silicon, right? And and this is like I sat through prototyping sessions, right? And you know drew sketches and thought of ten different ideas, threw them down, and had to you know weigh them pros and cons, right? And this was one of my first real applications into uh, a product development strategy, right? I've I've done a couple design thinking principle things before, um, but really taking a project from concept to uh, demonstration, uh, front front to back and taking ownership of that is, is pretty powerful. Um, and so that'll give me confidence, you know, through to my master's and, and beyond. Um, even I'm on a build team right now and I'm using a lot of the principles that I've, I've learned from that. That's awesome. I think it's it's great that it's also kind of like a culmination, I feel like, of a, lot of a lot of what we've learned throughout our years at SC. And I feel like this wouldn't be a good mechanical engineering podcast if I didn't ask, um, what has been your favorite mechanical engineering class that you've taken at USC? You know, things that have helped lead to this moment. I'm going to give the unpopular opinion answer <laughs> and say the first semester of Mech Ops. Wow, um, I think you are the only person on this planet that I've heard say really like that class. 
or would say I mean, that their favorite. I don't know. I think for me, I also took it over the summer, which, you know, if anyone's listening to this and they're coming to USC and is at this crossroads, take Metcalfs over the summer because it's a lot smaller of a class instead of it being all of the aerospace, astronautical and mechanical engineers together in one class. I think there were 15 of us. So a lot more individualized attention. And even though it is a lot more fast paced, like a lot more fast paced, I think our first lecture covered the first two weeks of material. Um, wow. Yeah, I had a four hour lecture on my birthday. It was kind of awful, but the rest of the class was great. Um, but you really start to feel like that for me was where the idea of being an engineering student versus an engineer really kicked in. Mm-hmm. Cause it would be something as simple as, you know, being home and having my dad say like, oh, I don't think the stove is level. All of a sudden I went to this analytical mode and was like trying to figure out which leg is loose and how can I auto level this? Cause, and I took a step back and I was like, okay, whoa, like, you know, six weeks ago, this wasn't how I was thinking. So it's, I think it's a lot of work, um, but it is manageable. And it is really cool to be able to kind of start this idea, like Tom was saying, of taking ownership of projects because the labs, you're doing them on the, your own, you're finding your own results and giving kind of your own spin on so what at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And with the professors and the lab teams really being able to guide you through that process, even though it is a little bit painful going through it, you know, I just having that kind of aha moment of, wow, I actually feel like an engineer was, you know, kind of irreplaceable in an academic sense. I mean, that's huge because in three and a half months, we will be real engineers, guys. No, stop, please. I'm afraid. <laughs> you know, that degree in hand, engineers, and then next year, the masters, round two, friends. Also, just kind of a side note, the three of us are our neighbors, so that's going to be fun for, for one more year. Um, but tell me, what has been your favorite, your favorite class? Um, I, uh, another c- controversial, uh, opinion, Ooh. um, I love classes at USC, right? Um, and, and, and I, I'll, I'll get to my favorite class in a second, right? Um, I recommend, I recommend build teams, right? Mm-hmm. Get out of the classroom, get into labs. Don't what stress team are too you much. On? Um, I'm the, I'm the chassis lead for USC Formula Electric. Um, I also work in the carbon fiber lab, but like, don't stress about getting into labs and, and doing everything immediately, right? You're, you're here to have fun first, right? I want to get, get that, lay that out. Um, my favorite class at USC would probably be 302, a, a, a controversial opinion, um, especially because I did not get a very good grade. Um, what is this I class? Got, what is it called? This I got a really bad grade. It was, it's called dynamic systems. Um, and, and it's, it, it's, um, mathematics applied to physics with differential equations. Right. And that's probably a bunch of mumbo jumbo wow. people out, out to, to high schoolers, you know, unless you're heavy, heavy in math, but this is, this is something that like as engineers, we're taught a ton of math. Right. And then you get into this class and they go, Hey, this is why you're learning all of that math. And it was so compelling to me. Um, th- this was the, the semester when COVID hit and, and then it, things went off the rails and my grades tanked. Um, but still those first couple, first couple months and even, even now I think that's a phenomenal class because they got to say, this is why you're learning all the math, right? And I was like, that all of this suffering that I've been through, right? It makes sense. It makes perfect sense, right? And it's kind of similar to, to Nick's answer there, where it's like the fun classes in engineering are not going to be the easy classes in engineering because that's not why you're in engineering, right? The fun classes are going to be the ones where you struggle, right? But you learn and you develop because of it. Yeah, I think it's something that's kind of universal too, is like, if you're looking for an easy way to make money, engineering is so not the place to do that, especially <laughs> mechanical. So, I mean, it also means that, especially at USC, these tough classes we're talking about, we aren't struggling on alone. Like you're able to work with people who are equally passionate in so many different fields too. So and yeah, there's always resources classes. too. There's always exactly. resources. Like there's TAs, there's office hours. People make study yeah. groups. I mean, there's your friends. There's your friends, <laughs> yeah. What- and there's probably like a whole host of 
other things that are worthy of another podcast as well and just like the different resources that people have utilized for yeah. success at USC so but that's also that how you make your closest up. friends in your major it's like when you stay up late studying for an exam like that's how you make your closest friends like that's how I've made my good friends in ISE is like late night talking about like statistical quality analysis things like that oh 100 percent. I mean Tillman and I both mechanical engineers studied so well together we decided to try living together and you know we haven't killed each other yet so that's a good thing yeah. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad for that one. I'm glad for that one. Um, I know we've kind of like derailed a little bit from talking about projects, but I have this one question that I've actually been really curious about. Um, we talked a lot about like your projects and really cool ones, but I'm curious, is there another project that somebody else did that you would have wanted to be a part of when you saw it at that fair, Nick, that you mentioned earlier? Like, is there one like, you don't have to go super in depth, but I'd love to just know. Fantastic question. Um, I don't know. There was a group that like named their project. I don't know what it was. It had something to do with water. And I only know that because it looked like a gigantic, crazy, like engineering shower. Yeah. Um, and it, like, I don't know. It was huge. It was like this six foot tall thing and like a shower curtain and it was spraying water. And I don't know what the point of it was but they called it the Medusa project. All of them had shirts with like this logo they made on it. They went so shark tank all out. It was honestly ridiculous. Um, it, I, don't, I have no idea what it was. I, it was just like, you know, we're all setting up for the fair with our little apparatuses at our tables and they just had this like massive thing. And I'm like, it was, it was, I think it was sea urchin removal. So it was like a, like a, it had water jets that would go off. Uh, it was like an autonomous robot that would shoot water at the sea urchins and like suck them off the, they're invasive right yeah so suck them off. Help. how uh, interesting like yeah and it was a group of like it was a group of like an aeronautical engineer an astronautical engineer and like two mechanical so it's like a group you would never think this kind of project is coming from which made it just so cool with that said do i think i could have hang like you know kept up with that group i have no idea because that was like a lot of work so i'm gonna go with robot fish final answer because i mean it was a robot fish it was super cool luhar's lab is just so impressive so being able to work in like one of honestly like the nicest water channels that any college would be a great experience but I mean it's, it's robot fish like the name itself just kind of lends like a super quirky zany project that it was really cool you know it landed it was, it was super cool it was cool getting to watch the little robot swim what about you Tillman any any projects you think yeah there was just there were just a ton of compelling projects there, right um just so many one one group redesign the intake for a, an FSAE car, right? One, one oh. group characterized the, um, the, the, fuel, the fuel nozzle for uh, uh, a rocket ship by using like probability fields. And they measured that based off of where this, this liquid would shoot, right? Um, they're just so compelling. Um, but probably one that I would have loved to work in would be um, a composites one. Uh, I also work in the composites lab. So to see, uh, to see some of these, these guys work on a uh, carbon fiber composite layup and try to, uh, try to automate this, right. Try to, try to, uh, get it going smoother and, uh, uh more efficiently, uh, measure the flow front and the pressure gradient across, uh, uh, your impregnating carbon fiber um it's it's fun because it because i work in that lab and to see what they they managed to do with these pressure sensors um it was quite impressive right yeah i think it's awesome one of the reasons i was also curious is because it's, it's cool to hear the diversity in all the projects that were going on it's awesome to hear how different these all were from your yeah. own from each other and i think that's great and i feel like that kind of leads me to my last question of tonight um thank you again both of you for doing this with me but I know we touched on this a little bit, but why do you think it's important that as seniors, we have a capstone class? Like, why do you think in general, it's important we do something like this? Ooh. Um, because it's really hard to tell when you start to feel like an engineer. And I know that's a really strange answer because I just gave this thing about like, mech ops. Oh, I started to feel like I thought like an engineer. But at the same time, I mean, halfway through the semester, 
you know, even last semester, I was having this whole kind of not existential crisis, but being really worried. And, you know, someone can vouch for it because he heard my tangents on this multiple times. I'm like, oh my God, we're graduating this year. Like, am I an engineer? Do I really know how to do this? All of this kind of stuff. And then you take a step back and you're like, I really did that from scratch. Like I built a thing. I, I made this, you know, thing with three other people and, you know, there's design constraints, time, um, you know, time and uh, cost are like two of the three, like biggest things somebody has to think of when designing any project. Like we were really bound by two of, by both of them. Um, and then you have to like be able to conceptualize a thing just kind of in your head, turn it from in your head to a drawing, to CAD, to real life, and then actually work with it. And, you know, in my case, that's spinning magnetic wheels that are trying to crash into each other with 120 pounds of force at like 600 plus RPM, you know, and you're doing just kind of out in the lab, like safety goggles on, have fun with this thing that we built. Like we just kind of have to trust it to hold together, um, which at the time seemed really daunting. And then it's like, no, I'm, I'm an engineer. I'm actually ready to do this. So I think like the big thing that comes out of capstone classes is they're a lot of work. They are daunting and it's really kind of overwhelming at times to go through that process. But at the same time, it was a lot of fun to get my hands dirty. It was a lot of fun to kind of build this thing for myself and walk out of the class and like, you know, I'm ready. I, I can do this. Like I'm ready to, to engineer outside of USC. And that's, that's like, Nick, Nick hit, hit a lot of it right there. And uh, I'll, I probably just going to end up rephrasing what Nick's saying, but I'll, I'll give it a, a shot here. I think every single capstone is designed for their own major, right? Most majors at USC, if not all, have some sort of capstone, right? Um, and, and each one is tailored to kind of be a culmination of your experience at, at USC. Um, the mechanical engineering one is a little bit different, in my opinion, because it is so hands-on, right? Um, and, and USC, you know, we teach a lot of conceptual things, right? And, and a lot of mathematics and a lot of science, right? And not a ton of deep, deep hands-on in the undergraduate level courses, unless you're on a build team or in a lab. Um, and, and so, you know, armed with all of this science and mathematics through your prerequisites, it's incredibly crucial for mechanical engineers to have a hands-on project that they themselves take ownership of, right? And that's why I say it's tailored to the mechanical engineer, because in my opinion, if you're a mechanical engineer who does not know how to build things with your hands, you know, turn a screwdriver, know what a ratchet set is, right? You know, kind of, you know, know how to use a drill press, like, you know, fairly basic shop things, right? In my opinion, you need to know those things to, to be successful as a mechanical engineer, right? And those are not really tough things to do, right? That's what this class is for. You show up to it, and if you've never worked in shops before, right, it goes, hey, before you go out into the workforce, there's one more thing you really need to know, right? And in my opinion, for a mechanical engineer, that's, you know, basic shop training, right? And, and the ability to get your hands on a thing and develop it, right, and build it. Yeah, 100%. And I'll also kind of wrap it up with um, in AME 101, you know, the, the intro to mechanical engineering, as freshmen, we have to go and we use BHE 310, the capstone lab for like two weeks to build this tiny little robot from a kit. And we're seeing all these seniors running around and doing all this stuff. And it's like, how are they this far along? Like, what are they doing? I have no clue how they got there. And then here we are doing it, making all these things. Then you see these cute little freshmen coming in looking so <laughs> nervous because they're in a shop and you're just like, oh my God, I was one of them four years ago. I'm old, but like, oh man, wow, I've come a long way. That's crazy. That's awesome to hear. Thank you both so much for sharing about this because I think this is something, you know, high school seniors don't even think about because, you know, it's four years away from them. They don't even think about what senior year of college could look like. So hopefully it gets people excited. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. It's kind of fun to think back on it, you know, fondly. <laughs> not, not when the class is actually happening. Fair.
Thanks, Bye, guys. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. And we're back. I was wondering, Alex, what what do you think is the benefit of doing a capstone? Like, what? Do, why do you think Viterbi always does this? I think Viterbi does a capstone because it really gives all of the engineers to use the skills that they've learned throughout their four years or however many years they've been in the program mm-hmm. and really get hands-on experience. I think that has been my favorite part about my capstone. And that really sounded like it was Nick and Tillman's favorite part as well. Can you tell mm-hmm. people a little bit more about your capstone? Because it's not necessarily the same thing, right? Because every, everybody yeah. has different capstone courses for different majors and not everybody does the same thing even inside that same major. So can you tell a little bit more about what you're doing? Yeah, so my capstone is actually a two semester long class instead of just being one semester. And we actually get to work with outside organizations. So we are partnered with a client in the Los Angeles area and they come to us with a problem. We don't actually come up with our own, like the mechanical engineering students. So we work with this small business and we help them improve some kind of process or systems that they have um, and help them just make their business a little bit smoother. So for us in our first semester, it's just a lot of meetings and we come up with the design phase of how we want the system to run. And then second semester, what I'm doing right now is all about implementation of the project. It's very cool because it, it really kind of makes you real world technical consultants um, mm-hmm. and, and it puts you into working with a real company and solving a problem for them. And I think that's incredibly exciting. Are you able to talk about who your company is and what you're working on? I am. It's actually really exciting because I'm working with an industrial and systems engineering alum. She actually graduated just, I believe, two years ago and started her own business. Um, She does women empowerment. She does it for girls uh, ages nine to 15. And then she has another group that's um, for women in their 20s and then women in their 30s. Um, And right now it's completely virtual. So we've been helping her kind of streamline that sign up process as well as implementation, just because these Zoom calls can be 500 girls and she's currently doing everything manually by herself. So we've set up kind of an automation system for her. Super cool. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, well, uh, Alex, my, my, my last question to you, well, maybe it's not my last question. I shouldn't say that is, uh, <laughs> given that it is your senior year, I think this is something, Emily, we've talked about with others. Um, mm-hmm. what are you hoping to accomplish, do participate in what's, what's on your bucket list for senior year? Still, we got, you said 13 weeks at the beginning of the call. Oh gosh. Um, the USC I think experience. one of the things- This might not be typical, but I'm really looking forward to the men's basketball season um, this year just because they did so well last year and they made it to March Madness. And, you know, we didn't get to go because of COVID. And so Mm -hmm. I'm really hoping they make it again this year and that I will be able to get to be there cheering on the sidelines. So that'll be very, very cool. That's kind of my ideal, my ideal semester that would happen. Awesome. Awesome. And then we, we missed you over the weekend, but Emily, how was the retreat for you? It was good. So can I like spoil yeah, the details you do, of the you do whatever you want. Yeah. Well, yeah. So there's a secret like spring BSA retreat every year, but they don't tell you where you're going until the morning of. So I was like super tired. I had just come back from Joshua tree. Um, and then they were like, you're going to Disneyland. And I was like, so excited, but already so tired. But I had such a good time and really like felt like I got to meet the other VSAs and I get to know them like on a personal level when you're like going down a roller coaster with them. I feel like you're yeah. at a I like I know everyone's scream now, so <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> awesome. Good times. Good times. Well, mm-hmm. thank you so much, uh, y'all. And um, for those of you that are, you know, high school juniors and younger, maybe just starting out your college search. Uh, if you're if you're listening to the podcast, thanks for listening. You know, we got new episodes pretty much every week, and uh, don't don't hesitate to register for one of our info sessions. The info sessions uh, can be registered for at viterbiadmission.usc.edu/visit. Uh, all vir- info sessions are still virtual for the time being, but they're incredibly helpful. And we also have current students, just like Emily and Alex, on each of those sessions to talk with you and help share their experiences and you get all of your questions answered. That's probably your best move. If you have applied and you're you know, wondering what's going on, well, think about this. It took you a long while to write out your application 
And then we have to read over 14,000 of them. So we have to read them all. And that's what we're doing. So we're, we're currently reading applications. Uh, we will get back to everybody who has completed an application by the end of March. So sit tight. If you are a transfer applicant, um, we still got some time here. So February 15th is the deadline to submit your application. If you're a transfer applicant, once you've applied, there's no immediate turnaround on that either. Um, we have to, we're still working through our first year applications. Then we get to our transfer applications and transfer applications uh, can expect to receive a decision or a request for spring grades if we need to see what's going on in your spring semester before we issue an admission decision um, by the end of May. So uh, a admission decision or a request for spring grades will happen by the end of May. So that's where we are in the world of admission. I hope that's helpful and I hope you all are staying well. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you next time.